Welcome to your first video in a three-part mini-series on Budokan Yoga Basics. My name is Ashley and I will be your Budokan Yoga Sensei for the next few minutes or next few videos. So I hope you're able to grab a yoga mat and join along. So to get started, we start in a position called Seiza, which is what I'm in now. It's a seated position where you're sitting on your heels. If this is uncomfortable, you can always grab a block bolster or some sort of blanket to make this to lift and elevate your, your hips a little bit, or just sit in a comfortable pose that's right for you. Cross leg, legs forward, that kind of thing. So you're going to sit for a moment, just sit. Close your eyes, rest your hands onto your legs, face, face up or face down. Just take a few deep breaths to come into this moment. Deep inhale through the nose. Slow exhale through the nose. Start to tune inward. What does that mean? Check in with your body. Check in with your breath. Check in with your minds. And settle into this moment. Before we get started, I'm going to go through a little bit of terminology with you because you'll be hearing certain cues and phrases that you might not be familiar with, even if you've been practicing yoga for, you know, quite some time. But the kind of yoga is a little different. There's a little bit of a martial arts element and circular pattern of movement involved. It's a slow flow, circular movement, vinyasa style class with a lot of elements of striking and blocking. So one of the, the most prominent thing you'll probably hear me say a lot is the term cobra hood. Cobra hood is that, like a snake, you think of a, a hood of a cobra, a snake, where you round your back, pull the chest in, abs engaged, hands are for usually it's in a plank pose for your cobra hood. So think of lifting, protracting the shoulders, shoulders out of the ears, and just getting that roundedness, trying to hollow out the chest. You might hear this more as protracting shoulders, press into the ground, cobra hood. So you got that. You're going to be using cobra hood through most of your plank, down dogs, most of these transitions because it's a very strong and powerful position. If you think of a fighter, they're constantly like this because it's a strong, you know, guarded, defensive position. So you've got that engagement of your abs and core, and then you've got just this strong, you know, your back is used to to block in your, as your defense. It's a strong part of your body. Your back is a very strong part of your body. So let's use it. You'll also hear me say to demi point your feet. In yoga, we're often flexing our feet. This is a dorsal flex. Point, dorsal flex, point. Plantar flex, dorsal flex. So both are flexing because you're engaging. A demi point is pointing your feet, then pulling the toes back like you're kicking with the ball of your foot. You can also think of this as like Barbie toes or like um, flointing, which is like a point and flex at the same time. So it's a point of the foot and pull the toes back. Imagine pushing a door or pushing something down and you're kicking with this strong ball of the foot. So that's what we're going to use through our, when we lift a leg, we do different things. You're going to be down and pointing your feet. Uh, I think that's pretty much what you're going to hear for the most part. Cobra hood, um, spinal roll, a lot of spinal rolling. So getting used to movement through the spine in different ways. That'll be kind of fun. Um, as we go through this, I will let you know a little bit more terminology and you'll see it. So the best thing you can probably do is to watch this video before, um, before doing some of the movements. But, you know, that's up to you if you want to do them right away. But it's kind of good to see what's going on without without having to crank your head if you're in an in inverted position. So let's get started in that stays opposition once again. And I'll face this way this time. Face the front of your mat. Sitting on your heels so that nice and tall. To begin our practice, we bow in. Just to bow and honor our practice, to bow and honor our teachers, those around us, and that connection that is yoga and life. So we'll take our right hand to the floor first, then our left hand, index finger and thumbs touching, and your forehead comes down to the floor. Let's bow in. Rise back up. Right hand replaces to your thigh and the left hand, and we're ready to go. 
We got this. So let's take our hands forward into a four-point base. Hands will be directly under the shoulders and knees under the hips. Just to get our bodies moving a little bit, we'll take that simple cat and cow movement. Spread the fingers wide, press into the tippy fingers, the pads of the, the fingertips and the knuckles, and start to arch and round the back. So this is where you can practice that cobra hood right away. Instead of just rounding the mid back, press into the hands and lift and arch the upper back. So keep going back and forth, adding some shoulder rolls as you move back and forth, as you go up and down. A little bend in the elbows in between each press. And the way that we're breathing is just deep and steady through your nose. In our yoga practice, you might hear it as ujjayi pranayama, ujjayi breath. It's a heated style breath, a little constriction in the back of the throat. But we're not focusing our breath to our movements. We're just making sure that we're breathing deeply. Now, hold yourself in a hands and knees position, that four-point base, and just working on that shoulder protraction. So press into the hands, round the upper back, and then in a not so great fashion, collapse, just to feel what the shoulders, that feels like having the shoulders squeeze together. Become more aware of that part of your body between the shoulders and the upper back. Press and lift, then lower, squeeze the shoulders. Rarely are you gonna find us in this squeezing shoulders position. It doesn't feel that great, it's not very strong for your body, but it's good to feel it. Press and protract, then retract making sure those shoulders are directly over the wrist at all times. Now let's try that from a plank position, shall we? Okay, so step one foot back and then the other in the strong plank. This is not a plank, this is not a plank, a plank is a straight line. Inner plank, press into the hands so you've got that core engaged, kneecap joint up so that you've got the quads engaged. And then try the shoulder protraction and retraction exercise. Down, so your arms stay straight. You're just collapsing, chest down, then press and lift. Just do it a few times. You can already feel heat building in your body. Gaze is right in front of the fingertips. And then take the knees down. I've already got a little pink in my cheeks, a little bit of heat being built. So that's a good practice to get into if you're still building the strength in your upper body and core. Just do those, you know, scapula push-ups is what we call them. Either from the knees, from plank, or even kneeling plank. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit more length from direct hands and knees and get a little bit more engagement when you set it back. Shoulders stay over the wrist. So you can do that exercise as much as you need to, maybe a little bit every single day. From there, we'll get into rolling wave, which is one of the first movements we learn as a Budokan yogi. Rolling wave is our transition from plank to down dog and back and forth. Now, you might not think much about that transition in our yoga classes. You might just push right back to down dog from your plank pose, um, but we're gonna actually slow it down a bit and articulate that movement. I'll also show you a variation that we can use if this is a little bit um, too much right now, where we are still building strength. So at first, I'll, I'll show you the, and we'll go through the regular um, rolling wave. So you get back in that plank pose, press into the hands and protract the shoulders, tuck the chin, look down towards your belly, and then starting with the upper back, you know, roll from upper back to lower back like you're rolling a penny down your spine, very slowly articulating one vertebrae at a time, back to downward facing dog. And the heels will come down and pedal the feet, feeling that down dog. Don't uh, move your feet anywhere forward or back, keep them in the same position. Full rolling wave is transitioning slowly from downward facing dog into a floating upward dog and back. So let's try that. So you're in down dog, lift the heels and the tailbone without moving the upper body. Tuck the chin and starting with tilting of the pelvis from anterior to posterior, pull your belly in. Start to roll forward very slowly. You should be taking at least a few deep breaths to get forward. Make sure that 
fingers are spread wide. Keep tucking the chin. Cobra hood in that body. Can you see that? Can you feel it? And once you lengthen out enough where your hips are about shoulder height, the hips start to descend towards the ground without touching into an up dog, floating on the toes. Roll the shoulders back and down, protract or retract into press shoulders. Look forward and keep your abs engaged, core strong to support that lower back. We're in up dog. Look down to get back. Look down first, starting with the upper body, cobra hood, by drawing the shoulders forward and down, press into the hands, use that core strength to slowly roll yourself back. Starting from upper body, thoracic spine, rolling your way back to the lumbar spine. And keep breathing, of course. You'll find your way to your down dog and hold. You could do that a few more times. But for now, I'm going to show you the variation. If that was a little bit challenging or you want to do maybe one or two of those and then come back down to this lower level, uh, this variation comes, starts from child's pose. Same concept where we are reach, um, going to roll forward into our up dog and then back into child's pose. This time using the knees. So we're in child's pose, sitting back on the heels, stretching those arms out long. Make sure the hands are planted where they regularly would be in a plank pose. Tuck your chin and start to roll yourself forward, still with the same spinal articulation. Staying on the knees this time. So rolling forward, lengthening out, keep the chin tucked until you lengthen all the way. Roll the shoulders back, hips descend. Press your heart through the shoulders so your wrists are directly under the shoulders. Stay strong by lifting through the lower back and the abs as to not put too much pressure. You don't want this going on. You want to stay lifted and strong. To get back, same concept, look down, press into the hands, cobra hook, protract the shoulders, and roll back to your child's pose, taking your time and feeling the sensations up and down the body before we sit down. So that's two ways to do a uh, rolling wave. We've got the child's pose option and the regular down dog to up dog variation. So let's go ahead and do two more of those just to get ourselves fully warmed up and prepared for what's to come ahead. So find your way to your plank position. Four point base and then stepping back into plank. Look down, press into the hands. Roll back to downward facing dog. And if you try to take shortcuts, you're only shortcutting yourself. The best progress is made by slow and steady. So lift the heels, tuck the chin, start to roll forward, finding a slow roll. I like to take at least three breaths on the way forward and back, if not more. Chest lifts as you open up into that floating up dog. Shoulders back. And look down. Press into the hands and roll back. Upper back to lower back. Do one more time. Lift the heels and tailbone, tuck the chin, roll forward. Heels are the last thing that come down in your down dog. Okay, come back to your knees. Once you've completed your two, come back to the knees. The next thing we're going through is rolling vinyasa. We just did rolling wave, 
Roll forward, roll back. Rolling wave, looks like a, looks like a wave. Rolling vinyasa includes what we call cobra roll. So it's our way of going from the floor, like a chaturanga to up dog, if you're familiar with yoga, but this is to the floor cobra roll into up dog. This is a challenging one. I typically tell students in my life, in-person classes, that it's usually gonna take five or six classes of working on this before actually maybe understanding and being able to do it. So just take your time, practice it, do what you can, and just don't worry so much about making it look a certain way. Do what's best for your body. I'm gonna show you what it's like. If you know, if you know what this is, go ahead and do it with me. Um, but I'll show you what it is, and you can watch before attempting. So we're done on the floor. You actually lower all the way to the ground from plank. Elbows are in and hands are next to your chest or your shoulders. Your toes are tucked under because it makes it easier for you to just push forward, lifting your butt, creating this anterior tilt, flatten the feet. There's a little space between your hip bones and the floor. Look down, press into the ground, and we do a wave-like roll into up dog. Yeah? Let me show that again. Lift your butt, knees in a couple inches, look down, press into the floor, and wave through the spine into upward facing dog. Okay, so to build strength for that, what I'll have you do is start in this position with your butt lifted, little space between your hips and the floor, elbows hug in, and all we're doing from here is trying to look at the knees. So press into the hands, look at the knees and then down, chest to the ground, look forward. Once again, press the chest up and look at the knees. And you're just doing this little tilt back and forth. You'll notice that your hips are also tilting posteriorly and anteriorly back and forth. So that's a great way to build the tricep strength, also to get um, awareness going into the hip region and the spine region of your body. From there, if you're looking at the knees, then the hips to the floor, chest opens up, go over roll. We'll go through this a little bit more in depth and keep practicing as time goes on. But from this up dog, you can also pause and work on that yourself too. From this up dog, your toes are pointed. So you're like flat on the tops of your feet. Look down, press into the hands, cobra roll, not, not cobra roll, cobra hood, and roll back to downward facing dog. And you'll just walk over or flip over the feet when it feels appropriate for your body. Full rolling vinyasa starts from that rolling wave position, lifting the heels, tuck the chin, roll forward into plank pose. From plank pose, keep shifting forward. Bend the elbows into the side of the body, make sure they're pointing to the back of the room, and descend to the floor. This is where cobra roll comes in. Tuck the toes or push them forward. Your butt will lift, knees will draw forward. Flatten the feet. Press into the hands, wave like roll through the spine to get to your up dog. Knees lift, gaze lifts. Look down, cobra hood in the shoulders, upper body, roll back to downward facing dog. That is our rolling vinyasa. Let's try that a couple more times. It's always good to practice the basics. Lift the heels, set the chin, tilt the pelvis and roll forward into plank pose. Lengthening out, getting space from the chest to the floor. Start to bend the elbows. Look forward as you lower down. Cobra roll. Flatten the feet, lift your butt. Roll as you press the up dog. Look down and press back to down dog. Not press back, roll back. And I'll keep reminding you to go slower than you think you should. Let's do that once more. Lift the heels. Stretch out the legs, tuck the chin and roll forward to plank. Notice that strong.
strong protraction in the shoulders. Keep pressing the ground away. Lengthen up and plank. Lower slow to your belly, prone position. Keep the hands where they were, elbows hugged in. Scoot your knees forward and roll into up dog. Look down, roll back. Downward facing dog. Roll and wave. Your knees down, take a little break. If you need to stretch your wrists out during this, push pause. <laughs> take that break, stretch out your wrists, shake them out. Okay, we've got one more little exercise that we're going to go through, and it's called floating frog. This is the beginning of our Buddha Khan Sun salutation. This is a challenging one. It's a little bit scary, but there are ways that you can modify and adjust to the knees that you're at right now. Every day is going to be different, so just find what works for you in that moment. Floating frog is a transition from downward facing dog into a squat, a yogi squat. So we're in downward facing dog. You make this simple by just stepping forward, squatting, so malasana, this yoga squat. There we go. That's, that's the simplest version. Floating frog in its entirety is a float. Look forward, bend the knees. As you exhale, heels to your butt, and you slow down the process to get into your squat. Takes time, takes a lot of practice. So going through a few other versions, one way we can practice this exercise is simply just going back and forth, jumping forward, stepping back, jumping forward, stepping back. What you want to mostly be trying to do is land lightly, landing as light as possible. I don't care how high your feet get up or how big the jump is, it can be little, but land as light as possible. So if you notice that last one I did, bend the knees look forward as you exhale, just skimming the feet very lightly above the ground and landing soft on the, on the feet into a squat. So for a little while, just go ahead and practice that, trying to get both feet to land at the same time and soft. So we're not going to be elephants today. You're going to cause a dog to probably bark, right? Yeah? By the way, if you don't know who this is, this is Cobra. She was not named after any yoga or Buddha movements. Um, this is my dog Cobra, you will see her often. So keep playing with that, that up and down, holding frog. Try to get the heels to your butt when you start to get comfortable. Heels to the butt, bring the knees to the shoulders as if you're going to land in an arm balance crow pose or crane pose. Let's do a few more. Really get our heart rate higher. Okay. Come back down to your knees. This is where we say goodbye. In the next video, I'm going to go through a Buddha Khan sun salutation, the full version, piecing together what we just did here. For now, sit for a moment and be proud of what you just accomplished. Be amazed at the way that your body is able to move. It is amazing, it really is. So thank you for joining. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next Budokan Basics video. Bye.